was born into the perfect family <laughs> for what it is that I wanted to experience. So, when my mom and dad were in college, um, they got pregnant with me and they ended up getting married and then that was in 65. Then my little sister was born in 66, my little brother in 67, and my little sister in 68. And then right after my little sister was born and my dad's in medical school, how overwhelmed the two of them must have felt. But my mom, um, who I later understood what was going on with her, my dad still doesn't, but my mom, um, when my dad came home from work one time, my mom started saying things like, hey, the birds have been talking to me, hon. Hey, babe, this is what the tree said. <laughs> and, so, and so what they did back then is they gave people electric shock therapy. And so they gave mom electric shock therapy and a lot of medication, and she never came back from that. Mm. And um, my dad got very overwhelmed, and so, um, Right around the age of five or so, they ended up getting divorced, and my mom stayed in bed all the time, and my dad just never was there, and I don't ever remember him until I'm about 12. And so um, I was the oldest, and so I learned how to grocery shop, and uh, we would eat raw potatoes for dinner, and um, you know, it was a life that I knew. I knew there wasn't I knew that there wasn't an S-A-N-T-A, -A, if anybody, uh, because there weren't gifts under the tree, you know what I mean? Um, but for whatever reason, I, I had this God spark in me because I had such a, it's like I knew what was happening was hurtful, but at the same time, there was this, I get that people are doing the best that they know how. Mm. And that's grace. That's just something that, that God gave me. And so we ended up, when I was about nine years old, going to live with my mom's mom. And, um, you know, she was almost retired from teaching by then. And so when we moved in, she said to me, you got to help me raise these kids. And I was like, well, what do you think I've been doing all along? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, we lived with Graham. And um, I remember she was a very religious woman, very Catholic. And so we would go to church every Sunday. Well, um, we never really talked about Jesus in church, but there was a picture of Jesus on the wall in the hall in Graham's. And I remember saying to her as I'm walking by, I know that guy. And she'd say, how do you know that guy? And I'm like, I don't know his name, but I know that guy. And I just felt loved and protected and safe. You know, I knew it was, it was all going to be okay because I know that guy. And so anyway, when I was 12 years old, we moved in with my dad and my stepmother, and she's not that much older than me, and she must really have some hurt because hurt people hurt people. And, um, you know, the food was locked up and CPS was called, and we got beat up and blah, 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 and on and it goes. But it was the perfect family for me, and I understood why, but not until later. So anyway, long story short, you try to kill yourself a couple times, you get anorexia, then bulimia, and then all these other things. And then you end up um, meeting a great guy that I'm still married to. Oh my God, he's so awesome. Oh my God, when you married me, I'm like, oh, this man is in for it because I got work to do. <laughs> but anyway, so um, he's been very patient. And his typical line is, I don't understand you, but I do love you. <laughs> um, but, um, but anyway, so... Um, uh, um, we got married in the Catholic Church because I thought that was the right thing to do. I was always just trying to be the good girl. You know, just trying to be a good girl, oh, yeah. you know? And I thought if I was good enough, maybe Dad would love me, you know? And I already knew that God probably didn't love me because I knew the Ten Commandments and I was always screwing it up, so I figured that was a wash. <laughs> but, um, so, anyway, so, um, I got to a point when I was about, oh not quite 30 when I was like there's gotta be more like I ached I thirsted for something and um, so I ended up going into um, coming out of the Catholic Church which was so scary for me my family was very upset and thought I was gonna go to hell and so I ended up going over to a non-denominational I remember the very first time I walked in I, um, I started bawling my eyes out it was the presence of the Holy Spirit that it, I just started crying and so then I realized that you could go up and sing. And um, so I thought, well, I'll go on up and sing. 
And so I went up and I sang, and one thing led to another. I was writing songs, writing books. It was a very creative time. And oh man, I thought that I was going to be known in the world out there. <laughs> and nothing would happen. I'm like, what am I, freaking invisible? What's going on here? But anyway, one thing leads to another, leads to another. And God just keeps showing up, and God keeps showing up. And I'm reading the Bible, and I'm doing all the Beth Moore studies that she ever had. And um, so I had a couple of some, some profound things happen. I remember specifically one time when I was really bitching to God about my dad and how unfair it was and how he treated me. I didn't get a mom. She died when, I was, uh, when she was 50, and I was only about 25 or so. So I was just like, you know, God, you know, I didn't get his mom, I don't get a dad, I mean, this isn't fair, God, what's going on, my dad's a jerk, and he's still a jerk, and on and on, and, and he, let a, he let a lot of bad things happen to me, God, I can't understand, it's not fair. And God said to me, I want to show you a picture of what I see, and I was like, oh, okay. So he takes me to the scene, and I'm watching this, and I, I'm standing right behind Jesus, and Jesus with a, a woman who was caught in adultery and then all the Pharisees and the white, you know, older men there. And I was like, okay, what's going on? And God says, well, I want to show you um, where your dad is. And so I'm looking over there in the Pharisees and the old men, and God's like, no. And I'm just like, where? My dad was right here. He was the woman caught in the issue, you know, with, uh, and I was just like, well, well, I thought well, that would be me. That's the unfair thing that's happening. And God's like, mm, no, this is you. And I was one of the ones that mm. messed up. Um, and it was so profound for me because I was like, I don't, I get that, and it's landing, but what? <laughs> so I just kept on seeking and kept on mm. seeking, writing more songs and singing and worshiping and trying to get to know. And lately, um, uh, again, it happened. Well, I was in the church, and I'd get all these prophetic words, and I would be singing, and then I got asked to leave the church because you just can't be giving prophetic words, and you know, all this other stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I just left. I asked to be blessed on the way out, but I didn't go back because, they, you know, they asked not, me not to come back. So, <laughs> but, um, so... But I, I uh, but that's okay, you know, um, and, and so, um, and so, but I was at home and I was searching more and searching more and I'm like, hey, there's got to be more, there's got to be more, I, I'm just, there's something that I'm missing, and so, um, for whatever reason, I connected with Jackie, and um, Jackie, again, we had already connected quite a few times, so I've come to a retreat, so I came to a retreat, and, um, I'm just going to be honest with you. I did my first mushroom trip. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily at the trip, but it was after. And, um, and I, 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 I knew that there was something aching in me. That I, I just, there was something more. I wanted to see something more. And I knew that there was something that plant medicine, Mother Earth, would have for me. And believe me, that was the most surprising thing I ever thought that I would ex expect. But um, I remember saying to uh, Brian, he said, well, uh, uh, um, so, you know, with this whole trip, he said, I, I really think that you're someone who's pretty ascended, so I, I want to do something a little bit more. And he says, you know, what do you think you've been in your past life? And I said, well, I'm pretty sure I was Jesus. <laughs> and he said, okay. And I said, and I was also Hitler at some point. <laughs> I mean, and he said, no, but you get that. You have been the gamma of it, all of it. And I was just like, oh, absolutely. And all of a sudden, I had this revelation, well, the mushroom trip was awesome, just so that you're aware. It was you know, great. And I, I don't necessarily need another one, or more, or less, or whatever. It was just, it was, it, it just, it busted wide open things. I don't even know why I mentioned that. But anyway, I want to get back to why the whole with me and dad. And maybe it's answering something of yours. I don't know. But I, I wondered sometimes, where were we before we got here? Right, I, yeah. There was something that was right. happening, you know? And so I had this vision. What if, like, I don't know if this is the truth, but what if, what if I was up in heaven, wherever that is, in that space, and I'm God, and I'm saying, all right, guys, all the versions of me that are hanging out there, I would love to experience forgiveness. Mm -hmm. 
That's what I'd like to experience when I head down there. And you got maybe this boyfriend steps up and says, ah, I'll stand you up for a date. Exactly. You got this one who says, ah, I'll do this. You got another one who's like, I think I'm going to misunderstand you a little bit here and there. And then you get the last one. And it is my dad. And he steps up and he says, I would be the most brave thing of all. I'll go down and I'll be your dad. The one you should trust. The one that you know, should be able to rely on. And I will leave you. And then I won't come back for a while. And then I'm a lot of, a lot of bad shit happen to you. Then I'm going to misunderstand you. And then I'm going to blame it on you. And still have nothing to do with you or your kids. And you will completely misunderstand me and go through a really difficult time and wonder if you even should just stay on the earth. And then you will experience it with me. Or at least the opportunity to. And I went, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and now my dad would say, and then you will misunderstand me because you won't remember that all this happened until maybe later. But what if the people in our lives, and you think that they've done you wrong, but what if there was some kind of opportunity for you to then be able to experience? Like, I know what it's like to forgive, and I mean yeah. really forgive, and it was a journey. Father, forgive them. They really don't know what they're doing. And so when people come to me and they're talking in my life coaching stuff saying, Oh, but this happened and that happened. Do you know the vibration that I hold, the frequency I hold of unconditional forgiveness that I can then hold on behalf and be like, mm. oh man, I get it. I don't get exactly your situation, but I get it. And how blessed I am to have that experience, to have that opportunity. And so understand that every single thing you guys are going through and the relationships it's all opportunity and that doesn't mean that you don't hurt oh my god I hurt so bad so many times so often but you know what there were people there to hug me there was a husband who would understand there was a best friend who would call and say why am I calling you right now you know and then the last thing I want to say is because I struggled with even wanting to stay on the earth leaving just felt so much easier I will say that <laughs> I came into this revelation as I've come into this God consciousness, this unity consciousness. Where the hell would I go? <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to go. Where you go? There I'm you like, are. if I died, I would come back and I right. <laughs> and then I'm Yeah. And then further revelations of understanding that, do you know that I'm talking with me? Yes. <laughs> you are all beautiful versions of me. And I'm, if you hear me and you're like, oh, I'm you. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this life. And I know it can be so hard some days and sometimes in some seasons. But it is the perfect life. I look at my family and I am so Come on. thankful for them. Come on. They were exactly the exactly. Family I for the life I wanted to experience this time around. Girl. Thank you.